Android Dialogue, where we have bite-sized conversations with people in the Android community. I'm Quinn Dwet Dow, and I'm speaking with... Andrew Orobator. And we're currently in New York for... Well, I'm in New York for DroidCon New York. Andrew, I believe you're kind of a local person, so... Yep, I am based in New York City uh, in the financial district, and I am currently working for SmartThings. Awesome, and how did you get started in Android? Uh, it was around 2013, and mm -hmm. I had just taken a Java class, and... Uh, I also was carrying around my HTC Evo and my iPod Classic at the same time. And uh, I figured, why carry both of these devices with mm -hmm. me when my phone can do the same thing? So I looked around for a couple of music players on the Play Store, but mm -hmm. none of them really worked like the way that I wanted it to. Uh -huh. So I picked up the, uh, the Big Nerd Ranch's Guide to Android Development, read it cover to cover, mm -hmm. and then just started. I'm visiting New York for DroidCon New York, where both uh, Andrew and I were speaking. And I'm actually ex very excited to talk to Andrew because your talk was about something that I'm absolutely interested in, and that is the performance monitors, correct? Right. I feel like performance is obviously a really important subject on mobile because of these little constrained devices that we have to kind of load all these you know, delightful, um, highly animated, um, fully featured uh, experiences on. And a lot of times it doesn't quite work out that way. And we need to find, kind of usually um, debug problems um, often with performance. And I know that a tool that has come up a lot that I've heard of many, many times is SysTrace. Um, but SysTrace is kind of hard. Um, yeah, the UI for SysTrace is pretty clunky and yeah. it's, it's always painful to use. I did hear, though, that you can use WASD. If you're a gamer, you can use WASD to, like, navigate it, which I think is a cool thing. Oh, like thing. the up, right, left, down. Yeah, okay, up, right, okay. left, down. But it's still pretty hard. Like, I think this year at Google I.O., Tim Murray uh, gave a talk on it, which was pretty illuminating, but it's it's just not easy. Mm. Um, but this year, I think they also announced, like, the new performance monitors, and that's what Andrew was speaking on. And so can you tell us a little bit more about what are these fancy new performance monitors that, that we have now? Sure. So the performance monitors are, well, first of all, where are they? It's <laughs> located right next to the LogCat. So if you pull up Android Studio, uh, there's going to be a tab that you can hit right next to LogCat, and then you can look up the performance monitors there. And they allow you to observe the behavior and performance of your application in real time. So there are four different performance monitors. There is the network monitor, memory, CPU, and GPU monitors. I mean, obviously, again, we all kind of have performance problems, hopefully less, less often than not, but usually um, we all run across uh, some kind of performance problems as we're doing Android development. How did you kind of get into digging into the performance monitors? Sure. So I was working with my music player, Oracle Music Player, and uh, I was running into this bizarre crash with this one song. <laughs> there was one song that I would play, and for a few seconds, it would be fine, and, and, the, and the music would play. Mm -hmm. And then after a couple of seconds, the app would just be completely unresponsive. Mm -hmm. Like, clicking or swiping on any part of the screen gave no response. Mm -hmm. And eventually, my entire phone, not just the app, became incredibly sluggish, if not unresponsive. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like my immediate reaction was to check the logcat, right? To right. see yeah. what line of code is causing this to crash. Mm -hmm. uh, so I open up the logcat, and there are two incredibly unhelpful lines. The, <laughs> the first one is from was from the choreographer, mm -hmm. and it read, "Skip 265 frames. Your yes. application may be doing too much work." On the <laughs> you think so? Maybe just a little yeah, bit too much. Just just a little bit, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that that wasn't really too helpful. Uh, mm -hmm. The other one was from Art, and it read. Suspending all threads took 170.488 milliseconds. Mm -hmm. And that was just another roundabout way of saying that my app was frozen. Right. Yeah. Um, so I didn't have a stack trace, and I didn't really know where to go. Um, but luckily, I remembered a Google I.O. video that I had watched a while back about the performance monitors. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, I opened them up and, and started looking through them. Mm -hmm. Nice. And so what did, what, did you, what did you find? Like, I mean, which... What, what was it? I'm so curious. What was it that kind of destroyed your phone? <laughs> sure, sure. Um, so there is the so I looked through the GPU monitor, mm -hmm. and uh, the, well, the GPU monitor gives you a quick visual representation of how long it takes to render the frames of a UI window. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I opened, I reproduced the bug and opened up my GPU monitor, and it was it was flatlining for some reason. Okay. Uh, I didn't really understand what was going on, yeah. but I'm guessing that all the drawing had already been done before I opened up the monitor. Oh. Um, as, that's just a guess. Yeah. Um, 
But either way, like it wasn't being too helpful. Right. So I moved on to the network monitor. Mm -hmm. And the network monitor allows you to see all the traffic that your app is generating. So it shows you upload and download speeds and how long you took to transmit that data. Mm -hmm. But then when I opened up the network monitor, I saw nothing as well. It was completely flat. Mm. Um, so I moved on to the CPU monitor. Right. The CPU monitor, as its name suggests, uh, shows you how long or what percentage of CPU time that your application is using. Mm -hmm. And uh, there were a few spikes when I opened up the now playing screen but then it kind of quieted out afterwards. So I didn't really think that was the problem. And then when I opened up the memory monitor, the memory monitor allows you to see how much memory that your application is generating mm -hmm. and how much free memory there is. And when I opened up the memory monitor, I saw this massive, massive spike in memory. Ha -ha. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a clue, yeah. So there, so the memory monitor comes with a few other tools to help you dig a little deeper because now that I knew that I had a memory, uh, memory problem, like I still needed to know more about that, you know? Right, right. So there's a couple of buttons that you can use in the memory monitor's menu bar. There is the enable and disable button, which is available in all of the monitors. Um, then you have, uh, there's an icon that looks sort of like a garbage truck. And that allows you to force a garbage collection event. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Um, for, for those of you who may not know what that is, it's when the system, well, a garbage collection event is when the system will reclaim any memory that it sees as unused. Um, but forcing a garbage collection event seemed a little hacky mm -hmm. in this case. Yeah. So I decided against it. Mm -hmm. There's another tool uh, called the Java Heap Dump. Mm -hmm. And that essentially allows you to see all of the objects in memory. And then the uh, the fourth and final tool is the allocation tracker. And it's pretty similar to the Java heap dump because mm -hmm. it allows you to see all the objects in memory. But the key difference is that you can see which thread is allocating what object. Oh, wow. That's super handy. Yeah, super handy. So you can tell if you're doing like way too much in a main thread or if you're not like offloading things to a background thread enough. Mm -hmm. That is really cool. I needed to start pointing fingers. So Exactly. <laughs> Sorry. We got to blame sometimes. Yep. It's like we, we don't want to judge, but sometimes you got to blame somebody for your misappropriated memory. It's true. You know, it, it's, it's kind of a thing, though. Like I feel like SysTrace seems like very intimidating, but it seems really fully featured. Mm -hmm. Can we get like the same functionality from SysTrace in the network monitors, or is it like a subset? Like, how close can we get to like SysTrace power in uh you know in the, in the network mon or sorry in the performance monitors? Uh, you can get pretty close. Um, but I would I would always lean towards using the performance monitor just because they have a significantly nicer UI. Mm -hmm. um, if you find anything that's missing, then I would go over to SysTrace. But I haven't run into that case yet, and I'm glad for it. Yay! Do I mean? Can you um, give us some tips? Like, I mean, um, it sounds like you had to like do a lot of searching. Um, are there any kind of like pointers? Like if I have this kind of problem, generally you'll want to look at this monitor first. Like can you give us any hints on where to look first when we have like a certain kind of problem? Sure. So I have found that the performance monitor that most often has clues is the memory monitor. Mm -hmm. Because when something is crashing and you don't have a stack trace, that's probably because the system doesn't have enough memory. If the system doesn't have free memory, it can't really do much of anything. So that's like if some if everything is shutting down, uh, you have no stack trace. I would go I would go straight to the memory monitor because the, even the logcat needs memory to to print out, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, the the logcat would be best. If some things are are really slow and you're wondering what's taking so long, mm -hmm. I would recommend the CPU monitor because there is a, a stopwatch looking icon in the menu bar and that allows for method tracing. Mm -hmm. And what you can do with method tracing is you can inspect the call stack and then you can see how long each individual method took to complete. Um, is there any kind of like exporting of the data? Sure, so I know with the memory monitor because that's the one that I'm most familiar with, mm -hmm. the memory monitor, it, it generates this file. I forget the name of the extension, but you can save it for later so you can look at it later. You can like show in Explorer or show in Finder and then like send that off to somebody to share or something like that. Well, cool, I am so excited to use the performance monitors or I mean, not that I'm excited to have problems, but I'm really, uh, to kind of go home and kind of explore them and see what I can do with them. But thank you so much. Oh, also, um, Andrew, you happen to be a Castor.io 
um, instructor as well. That is true. Um, so I guess full disclosure, so am I. What course are you teaching on, on Castor.io? So I am currently teaching a course on ExoPlayer. Ooh. And ExoPlayer is Google's media playback library. Mm -hmm. So we have the media player, which yeah. is the default playback mechanism on Android for a while. Mm -hmm. But uh, Google has been working on ExoPlayer, which is an external library, meaning that you don't have to wait for your users to upgrade the device before you upgrade the code that's running. Mm -hmm. And it also includes support for a ton of different codecs. Um, it actually can use a lot of codecs by FFmpeg. Oh. And uh, for those of you who don't know, that's this massive, massive uh, media playing library. Mm -hmm. um, VLC, which is a video player that plays anything, VLC. Yeah. uses FFmpeg as mm -hmm. a back end. So that just gives you like some, some idea of like how robust, nice. how robust it is. Mm -hmm. um, it also includes support for uh, Dash streaming, a couple of other streaming technologies, oh, wow. and it plays audio and video as well. So if you are working on a media app and you happen to have performance problems, then Andrew is your kind of one-stop <laughs> shop for knowledge. Um, so definitely check out both his talk on uh, his talk at JoyCon New York whenever that comes out, um, hopefully very soon, because I am probably going to watch it about two or three times. <laughs> and also check out his uh, lessons on Castor.io. Um, so thank you so much, Andrew. Thanks for having me. Uh, if people wanted to find you on the internet, how can they do that? I am most reachable on Twitter at A Arobator. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. And thank you all. And we'll see you next time. Bye.